Julie, this is Angela and Julie. We're doing another interview with the Hummingbird Business Network. I'm so excited to introduce you to another of our beautiful members. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let Julie introduce herself, but first we're going to do a quick game of this or that just to get to know her. So we know her name is Julie Larson. Um, if you didn't know that, I should have said that. Um, and we'll talk more about who she is and what she does for her business in just a moment. But Julie, let me ask you four questions just to get to know you as a person. So okay. coffee or tea and why? Oh, tea. I tried very hard to like coffee um, and I gave up. Oh. <laughs> just, <laughs> at, at some point, I really did. I gave it the college try. And uh, at some point I was sitting there drinking coffee and I just, I really don't like this. No, I, love I, I love coffee. Uh, I love tea. Mm -hmm. All right. And do you have a favorite kind of tea, Julie? Yeah, black tea, the more caffeine, the better. And yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. Second, this or that cats or dogs and why? Oh, gee, uh, cats. I love animals, but cats, I, I am probably a cat lady. Um, I think three probably qualifies me and I have, uh, two rag dolls and a little tabby that's kind of half feral out there. Uh, cat ladies must have wild cats, you know, so, um, living around the house, but yeah, I, why? Um, they're more like people. Mm, um, yeah. They, uh, dogs are just so affirming. I, I like to be affirmed too, but um, cats are just, when, when they love on you, you know, it's because they want to, I guess dogs do too. I don't know. I just, uh, I like their quiet nature. Um, those things. They, yeah, definitely. I wonder if there's like some study that uh, looks at introverts versus extroverts and see you know looks at the correlation between if they have a cat or a dog because I feel like mm -hmm. introverts would totally like a cat I'm just oh, curious yeah. anyways <laughs> all right well, I am an introvert <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. all right so if you were to choose a book would it be a fiction or a non-fiction book and why fiction I read a lot and I read a lot of fiction um uh so Sometimes I read some nonfiction, generally about religious topics, um, but I just love a good story. Yeah. I love a good story and uh, about fiction, yeah, yeah. Okay, and our last one, this one is city life or countryside living. Oh, now I've done a switch on this because I lived in Los Angeles for 10 years and I was a city girl. Wow. And um, when we moved to Texas, uh, gosh, it's been a long time now. Uh, I kind of came almost kicking and screaming, but not quite. And um, but it's wonderful. I, I love it. It's quiet. The air smells good. Uh, uh, it, it, you know, your neighbors, uh, you're safe. Uh, your ice cream doesn't melt on the way home. Um, uh, it's, I, I just, I really, and I don't really live in the country. Uh, the town I live in probably has, uh, it's, uh, probably got about a quarter million people. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not tiny, but, but it's still, uh, it feels, it feels like country living by compared to Los Angeles. I love it. So I, I'm doing the reverse. So I grew up in the country. So I lived in this, now listen to the name of this town, Julia. Okay. Shootsbury. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I love it. know that's like in the backwoods. So I live there. Gotta be, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it has to be. And then as I'm older, I feel like I want to move to like a like a city. I think I'm ready for like a city. I live in Phoenix with the suburbs, but mm -hmm. my next move will most likely be the city life. I'm ready for it. As I'm ready for it. Wow. Yes. And so, why for that? Why for that? That's a good question. I think I like the proximity to things to do. I am a foodie, so I'm all about mm -hmm. like finding that really cute cafe and I'm a, I want to say I'm a wannabe coffee drinker <laughs> so <laughs> literally like because of the trend so I really like yeah. cappuccinos and different things like that mm -hmm. but anyhow yeah so I, I think it's the proximity and and so the city I'm thinking about is kind of a beach town as well mm -hmm. um though so where my son my oldest son anyhow mm -hmm. I think it's going to be Tampa yeah downtown Tampa. oh yeah, yeah Tampa's nice Tampa's yeah. nice so it, it has mm -hmm. that mix of like you know the mm -hmm. I don't know it has the beach mm -hmm. has the city anyhow all right. Yeah. Thank you, Julie, for answering the this or that. I love that segment because it really gets people to know who you are 
Um, and now we're going to get into the actual business part. And so the first question mm -hmm. I have for you, Julie, is can you tell me or tell us about yourself? Mm -hmm. And that's whatever you want to share. And what inspired you to start your own business? Okay, Th that one's uh, nothing inspired me to want to start my own business. I didn't want to start my own business. I am a musician. I make noise. I play instruments and I write songs. And uh, however, <laughs> mm -hmm. I am doing exactly that. I am starting my own business because I have written songs and I that's a product. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm trying to get my product out in front of people that can hear it and enjoy it, hopefully. And uh, so um, that is exactly what I'm doing, even if it was not my intention to start a business. But uh, actually, what happened is um, I was a worship on the worship team at at my church for a long time, and we got a new creative director there, and she came in and started this program of writing, uh, having the team write worship songs together, and um, it wasn't a hugely successful program, but it got me, you know, kind of thinking in the back of my mind, uh, I'm I'm an orchestral composer, not a songwriter at the time, and uh, those are two very different mediums. And um, so it was just kind of in the back of my mind uh, going along and, and maybe it may have, years may have even passed. And uh, I found myself in the audience at church, which was kind of unusual. I was normally on stage with the worship team playing keys, keyboard. And um, I was in the audience uh, singing the songs and I noticed these songs, I can't sing these songs honestly. And it wasn't because I disagreed with the message. It wasn't because uh, of something like that. But um, in a sense, I could I could sing them aspirationally, like I would like to be like this, or I could pronounce my good intentions for I will be like this. But um, they weren't meeting me where I was. And I thought to myself, this has got to be a need. I can't be the only person thinking this. I can't be the only person that this is happening to. So um, so I started really what was a long process of, of learning to write songs. And um, along the way, my friends heard the music and they were moved by the songs. And uh, that really made me feel like that it wasn't just something maybe that I wanted to do, that this was just a fun new hobby for me. Um, but maybe something that I really needed to do. I love it. So it was almost like the, um, they say the thing that you're seeking is seeking you in a way. And I know that's mm -hmm. a good mm -hmm. thing. That, mm -hmm. But this goes to the next question, which is uh, what services do you offer and how do they benefit others? You kind of leaned into that. You yeah. kind of leaned into how it serves others. Mm -hmm. But if you could tell us more. Sure. And and like I began uh, in with the last question, I didn't really start out doing this for anyone other than myself. Uh, it was really, it was really um, a pursuit of my own faith um, that I was doing it. Um, and um, as I said, this is a change in my past life as a composer. Um, I, I began as a uh, composer in residence for the local symphony here where I was writing, um, where I was writing symphonies for orchestra. And, you know, that's that's one genre where you're you're meeting the needs of your audience in a very, you know, artistic setting. And then I worked uh, commercially uh, for Texas A&M doing uh, development and recruitment videos um, for them. Um, and then I moved into uh, uh, I quit that job and it, you know, evolved into something that I wasn't enjoying anymore. And. Um, I started writing the scores for my husband's two uh, documentaries, uh, The Star of Bethlehem and uh, Christquake, and also at the same time began sort of version 1.0 of what I'm doing now, which was um, I took these old hymns mm -hmm. and I felt like the genre had been kind of lost. The meaning was in the meaning from the hymns was in these beautiful words, but the music really didn't meet people, most people, where where they are in the 21st century. So what I would do was take the the words, they would act as my movie, basically, and I would write a cinematic um, piece of music based on, based on those words, hoping to make the ideas fresh and, and call up, call up this, this meaning to, to the listener in a new way so that they could 
hear it again. Um, and then um, now I, I'm just hoping uh, that I can communicate uh, communicate to the listener um, with new words and new metaphors um, and resonate with their hearts um, the message that, that I'm, I'm trying to get across. I love it. And I love that you are someone that's not, it feels like you're in the same realm of what you've been doing, mm -hmm. but it's almost like in another uh -huh. sister, almost like a yeah, sister. Yeah, kind of is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I we love it. Is. Yeah. Uh -huh. So this is kind of like, I, I want to, I'm interested in how you're going to answer this, but um, the question is what pivots did you make before finding the right business idea? And it's interesting that you said you didn't like intention, like your intention was like, I'm going to find a business but it mm -hmm. kind of came to you. So mm -hmm. what are, so I guess yeah. I want to know your story because you did mention that you did write music. So this is not something brand new, mm -hmm. but how yeah. did, like, it was it just like something that you were called to do? Like, I, I know that pivots are sometimes intentional and sometimes not. So tell us more about that. Yeah, this last pivot, you know, I always, I, I don't know, from the age of 15, somewhere along in there, I got this weird idea that I wanted to write music. Mm -hmm. Where did it come from? I have no idea. Yeah. But I pursued it, and um, and I went to music school uh, in Los Angeles, and I graduated from the Thornton School of Music in, in at USC, and then uh, my husband and I left Los Angeles, and I honestly I thought I was hanging up my career because um, aren't you supposed to be in Los Angeles if you're a orchestral composer? I mean, what else do you do besides write for film? Mm -hmm. And um, but honestly, I didn't get the opportunities that I. I would have never gotten the opportunities in Los Angeles that I got once I left there and came here because all of a sudden all the composers are in Los Angeles. You know, they're all there. We're competing against one another. And I moved out here uh, to Texas and um, I'm immediately the composer in residence for the local symphony orchestra. Oh my gosh, what an opportunity. You know, my friends that I graduated from school with, they were all going, I cannot believe that you're getting to do this because they weren't getting to do that. Mm -hmm. And um, so um, uh, there have been a lot of pivots along the way. Like I said, I, I, I was, uh, that, that was classical music that I was writing then. And then I went to commercial and then went to, uh, doing my own CDs and writing for film. Um, and then this last pivot is a real big one because it's really into a new genre. Um, orchestral music is, um, um, it's a very different uh, animal <laughs> than uh, short form music uh, songs. And uh, and not only uh, is all of the instrumentation different, but, uh, you know, there are lyrics involved, you know, there's singing involved, there's engineering oh you would not believe the technology involved in producing new music versus handing the music sheets to the orchestra and have them play it I mean it's just so low tech by comparison to what what this is I mean I, I live at the computer I'm an engineer I'm truly a, a production engineer um, and uh, finally a, a complete surprise I, I also find myself as an entrepreneur so um so yeah, you gotta stay, you you have to stay nimble. <laughs> sure it's Julia, you're, yeah. And that kind of leads like as we I feel like you you cover uh the next question as you go, but it's what's next for you and your your business or your dream. Or I know that this is the very beginning stages. So what do you think is the next thing for you? Well, you know, I don't know. That's exactly what I thought. I thought I'm I'm just starting out. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of prayer. <laughs> but uh, I'm trying to be found. I'm I'm trying to get my message out right now. I'm trying to find a balance between um, supporting the business, pushing the business, and writing music. You know, making the product <laughs> because it's all coming from me all at the same time. So, Social media um, is my primary outlet for getting the message out, and I'm spending all of my time doing that. Seems like, like right now, that that's what's going on. I have another song coming out in about two and a half weeks, so the, the uh, social media stuff is really starting to heat up again. And yeah, that's what I do all day long, every day. It's like, when am I going to write music? But um, I'm sure I'll find the balance in it. I'll get better at one or the other or <laughs> something. Yeah, I feel like um, you, your struggle is real, like with all of us who are creators, like I feel like I've been a writer, my husband's a photographer, so we all have that sense of like, mm -hmm. 
trying to balance the business hat and then the creative mm -hmm. hat. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah. where do we, <laughs> when do we have time to actually market what we're creating and we'll create market. what we're marketing? Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. So it feels like it was always a pull and push, you know, there's yeah. like, mm -hmm. I hundred percent relate. Um, so this is, I, I guess we can tie this in this. Uh, we have just three more questions, but um, this is our bonus question, which is more about like your gift to the listener. And mm -hmm. just, uh, especially if there's like newer people, and I know that you're new to this particular business, but you've been in, you know, business, you've been, you know, a composer and so forth. But if you had to give advice to someone who is brand new coming mm -hmm. out of college, would you say to them um, to seek first a mentor or to seek first a partnership to get their business, their ideas, their goals off the ground? I think, and, and I, I can relate to this because I'm at the beginning of this particular journey. Mm -hmm. So um, because I'm at the beginning of a new journey myself, I'm going to say um, mentorship. Mm -hmm. And it's because everywhere I turn, there's something I need to know. There's something I need to know about publishing. There's something I need to know about distribution and marketing. Mm -hmm. um, there, there are volumes and volumes and volumes about each one of those subjects. And uh, gosh, I just think having a mentor that has been down this road and knows knows the, the the paths to take and which ones to turn away from um, is is invaluable. Uh, at the same time, having a partner to divide the the workload and share the expenses and uh, you know um, I've mainly been solo all my all my life and uh, but I know I experienced for a while kind of a partnership with my husband because he was, um, he did presentations all over the world uh, having to do with these uh, documentaries that he produced. And um, he would take my music with him to his presentation. So it was like I was touring. And so I got tons of exposure by going along. I didn't go. He took my music and played it uh, while people were waiting for the presentation and as they were leaving. And uh, I got a lot of exposure that way, being in partnership with him. Um, so, I mean, there are advantages on both sides, but if you're just starting out, I think a mentorship is really, really, really invaluable. I agree. And I, I went to UCLA and my, my favorite professor's name was Chip Anderson. Mm -hmm. His big, like kind of takeaway after the mini, I was his grad assistant. And so his big takeaway was like, be a mentor and have a mentor. So this is not on our script, but are you a mentor to someone, Julie? Like, is there someone that you've taken under your wing to to give them that kind of, because you've done a lot of beautiful things. So do you have someone that you kind of mentor or coach? Do you know, in there are not that many composers around. Do you know any? <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. and I live in a small town yeah. and even fewer women composers. I mean, all the composers, you know, well, songwriters, it's different, but uh, composers, they're all dead. You know, so uh, and they're all men. But um, so I really don't have someone that I mentor musically, okay. um, although that would be a lot of fun, I, I I think. But I do have a young woman that I kind of pour my life into. So, uh, you know, and uh, just a dear friend of the family that that I that I spend time pouring my life into helping trying to help her navigate roads that, you know, can be hard to navigate. Mm -hmm. I love that, Julie. I love that. And I think that I feel like there's such value in that. Um, so what, one thing I wanted to say is that we are in our group, we're going to be highlighting different women because this is Women's History Month uh, March. Mm -hmm. So is there like a, you mentioned women composers. If you had to think of like one woman that was a composer, maybe she's not alive, just because we're probably not familiar with that genre. Is there mm -hmm. a woman composer that we could look other than you like that we could look at that's been a history maker is that sort of thing uh, yeah you know there are there are uh you know let me see i i have actually read some of the history um mozart's sister apparently was quite a, a accomplished uh musician but uh you couldn't really be given the attention because she was she was female they they really discouraged her doing it uh, and um, Clara Schumann, uh, Schumann's wife, was also a, a fairly creditable, but they got absolutely, you know, no attention in, in doing so. And I got to tell you, uh, 
the women that have forged ahead and done it are are so brave because um it's a tough world uh it's a it's a tight it's a tight little uh it's a tight club i mean um and and you're kind of horny in uh, even me uh i was uh i graduated for in los angeles usc um and not that many women had had graduated in composition before before me wow. and um i i felt like um something like and and it's i felt something like discrimination actually so i think it's very it, it, the women that have gone before me have been have been very brave i can't i can't think of any uh, I, you know the two i thought of mozart's sister and clara schumann but um i can't think of any you know big names that that you guys are going to know um uh, there have been some um Oh dear, names, names, they're not coming to me. Um really, yeah. Yeah. But thank you for like even the story of Mozart's wife. Is it you said his sister, wife? Sister, sister, uh-huh. A mm -hmm. sister, just like having that um talent being overshadowed, you know, yes, like that is just absolutely. kind of, mm -hmm. kind of the, the typical kind of mm -hmm. storyline, especially during that time. But mm -hmm. thank you for that. That was off script. So I appreciate that that answer. Sure. So Okay, so closing thoughts. Is there anything you would we haven't discussed that you would like to share with our HBN audience? I can't. I can't think of what that would be. Um, I'm so new at this. I feel like you guys could share so much with me about how to do this, and you know what uh, you have so much more business experience than I do, but. Um, uh, I so appreciate being here today, Angela. I uh, appreciate the time and uh, I hope this resonates with somebody and I hope somebody who's just starting out and hears this can just do it, you know, get out there and, and do it. You can, you can. And I think I'm, I'm, I'm 65 years old and I'm entering, how about this one? I'm 65 years old and I'm entering the world of contemporary music at a time in my life when the entire world thinks I should sit down and take my medicine and go to bed <laughs> and, you know, retire. It, it's, it's the, um, so uh, be brave and, and step forward and, and do what your passion is. I love that, Julie, because I think uh, the point of these interviews is to get to know you, but it also is like to like a leave a, a pearl of wisdom and the mm -hmm. storyline that you have is so why I wanted this to be told is because I feel like you're right. Like, I think there's almost ageism and sexism and all of this. Yeah. And I feel like one of them is like, Hey, you're 65. It's <laughs> the time is for you to just hang back and just yeah. let life pass you by. And I love that you're like, no, <laughs> I'm not <laughs> no, dead yet. <laughs> I have a song left in me. Yeah. <laughs> Many mm -hmm. songs, in fact. Mm -hmm. So I yes. love this. Yeah. So I love that. I appreciate that so much. Um, so basically the last question is how do people get in touch with you? And I know that there's so many ways that you can use music as a form of communication or mm -hmm. so whether it's like including it in something that someone's doing online or uh, mm -hmm. something that they just want to listen to, to meditate mm -hmm. to. And I know there's so, so many ways you can use music, but mm -hmm. I want to know if people want to get in touch with you, if they want to access what you have created, how do they do that? I'm on Facebook, um, Julie Davison Larson, D-A-V-I-S-O-N, no D in the middle. That's my music page. Um, Julie Davison Larson on Facebook. Uh, Julie D. Larson on Instagram. Um, and my music is on Spotify. Uh, three different names. Isn't this horrible? Do you know that there are actually three Julie Larson composers? No kidding, oh, right no now. Way. <laughs> and it's not even that wow. common a name. So I, it's like you're born Julie Larson. Okay, you're going to be a composer. Um, but uh, so Facebook, Instagram, uh, I'm on Spotify and iTunes with just plain old Julie Larson. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, that'll, that's, and, and you can contact me through Instagram and Facebook and uh, I'll get those messages. Um, I think that, that probably covers it. Yeah. Thank you, Julie. So I want to just say thank you, Julie, for, for popping on with us to do an interview. Um, like I said, this is really about us as a sisterhood, just supporting one another. So mm -hmm. ladies, if you can go ahead and check out her 
different social media handles. And um, like I said, she's, she's like she mentioned, she's on different, um, I think, did you mention Spotify, Julie? I'm on Spotify and I'm on iTunes. I'm on, I'm generally just about everything, Pandora, everything. Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. So please check out her music, support her. She's a launching artist. Um, we want to do everything that we can to just support her, surpass so the information on. Um, we will see you April 18th at 930 at the studios for the networking event panel. Um, with that, I wanted to say thank you for joining us. And yeah, thank you everyone for being with us. All right. Mm -hmm. And we are signing off. All right. Thank you for having me, Angela. Of course.